is from John chapter 15, verses 12 to 16. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father I have known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and pronounce and produce fruit so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have started a tradition here. I guess it can be called a tradition if you do it more than a few weeks. But somebody says a prayer for me before I preach. Who's going to do it this morning? We can wait. I got all day. <laughs> Somebody be brave. Come on. We got so many. Thank you, Miss Toby. Lord, thank you for gathering us all to he here today together to celebrate what we have accomplished and things that we plan for the future. Thank you for Pastor Terry for bringing her as our leader to the church safely today. And thank you for the emergency response that can help when times are tough and you need a little help. Thank you for bringing us to a place where our souls and our spirits can come together and enjoy what it is that you have for us to learn today. Be with us as we hear your word and your inspiration from Pastor Terry. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Toby. I have been doing this job for 38 years. It's a long time. Mark Smiley's out there nodding because he just showed me he got his Medicare card. He's about two months younger than me. And he got his Medicare card. I just said, I need one, too, because I just turned 65 years old. That's really old, isn't it? Look at him going, yeah, 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 it is. And I have seen so many traditions through the years in churches, especially when it comes to weddings. I'll let you know on a secret. Pastors do not like doing weddings. Amen, Mark? You like weddings? You like weddings if you know the couple and they're part of your church. It's a great celebration. But mostly it's people who come knocking on the door saying, we need to get married. Can you do it like your service provider? They just want to get married and get out of here really fast. But there are all kinds of crazy traditions at weddings that people do now, things they add in. Now, for years it was the unity candle. You know, where the bride's parents light a candle, the groom's parents light a candle, they join their flames together and they have one lovely flame. It's not biblical, but it's nice, isn't it? But that was not enough. People went crazy because then they had the butterfly release. Anybody ever been to a wedding with a butterfly release? That's a good thing, because they don't release easily, because I'm telling you what happens when you have a butterfly release. You gotta get married exactly the right day for the butterflies that you have, and it never works out that way. Or Easter Sundays, I've had people who say, let's do a butterfly release, and they come out of their chrysalis with this black stuff on them, like merconum, like babies do, and their wings are all shriveled up and wet, and the kids wanna throw them and have them fly away, and they throw them and they go, but. It's really pretty, it's a wedding, you know, but. Thud, thud, thud. Butterflies hidden trees and hidden people, and it's not very pretty. Then there's the sand ceremony. Have you seen the sand ceremony? Anybody been to a wedding with sand ceremony? It's nice if you have kids coming in as a blended family. Everybody gets different color sand. They pour it together. Somebody always knocks it over, and they're trying to scoop it up so it looks like black by the time it's over with. Or it's windy, and everybody's got sand in their eyes. It's not, it's not a fun thing. Then there's the dove release. You know what birds do when they fly over your head, don't you? They poop on you. And I've had people ducking and things like that. Now, only one time. Now, this is a couple where I have really known them for a long time. They both worked at the National Aquarium in Baltimore, and they were, in, they were bird, bird carers, bird carer for tenders, whatever you call a bird care, caring for a person. They weren't, they weren't scientists, but they cared for these birds every day. They picked them up and kissed them, and they flew away. But I've had them fly right into the mother's of the bride, I've had them fly, I've, I've ducked. 
people get little white splotches all over their clothes. It can be ugly. The last one I saw, the newest tradition, was a box where they put in a bottle of wine, not for communion, I'm thinking, letters to each other, all kinds of stuff, and they nail it shut, and they open it, they pry it open on their first anniversary. And they're up there with a hammer and nails trying to hammer things shut. And you just think, why can't we just get married and call it a day? People like all these crazy, crazy, crazy traditions. But there's one that started recently that I like, and guess what it's about? It's about braiding three ribbons together. One for the bride, one for the groom, and there's the middle one for who? Do, 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 do. Who do you think the third ribbon is? For God. Or if you're a Christian, for Jesus. To be part of your vows, to be part of your life every day. I always tell people, the one thing I did right when I was married, my husband died almost seven years ago, the one thing I did right, I prayed every day, thank you, God, for Richard. And I still do. He's been gone all these years. I still thank God for Richard. Because if I still say thank you, I will always remember that he was a gift to me. He will always be a gift to me. So maybe some of you might want to try that with your marriages too. But it's a good foundation to have. So I picked that lesson to go with the one that I picked from John. Today in the church, it's really a special day in the life of the church. It's this Transfiguration Sunday. But I knew we had visitors and they were young and I thought some of you might not go to church all the time and the story about Jesus glowing in the dark is a little weird. So we're going to talk about friendship because everybody understands friendship, right? Anybody here not ever have a friend? If you're friendless, come see me. I'll be your friend. But everybody here has had a good friend, right? Now this is the part of the sermon where it's not a rhetorical question, which means when I call out, you get to answer me and you have to answer me out loud, not in your head. What are the qualities that you look for in a friend? or that you have in a good friend. What is your best friend like? My friend always what? Kaylee. Oh my golly. This girl's a prophet. A real friend will make you feel warm inside and feel loved. Amen. Who else knows what, what, what's the quality of a friend? Do we have one up here? Yes. They listen to you. They don't just, they don't just go, no, 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 no. They really listen to what you say, don't they? What else do real friends do? Jeremiah. They're loyal, very much so. Who else has a friend out there that you know why you love your friend so much? Oh, friendless ones, come on. You know what friends are like. Friends have your back, don't they? What does that mean to have somebody's back? It means that they're always going to stand up for you, right? What else, Jeremiah? Is that another one? No, you're going to answer my question. What else are your friends like? Mr. Paul Price, I see you out there. What's your friends? What's the best quality you can think of in a friend? He tattooed you for free. That is a friend, baby. That is a friend because tattoos are expensive. What else? Friends are helpful. Amen. What else are friends like? Mark, have you ever had a friend? I know he has because he's... They're generous. They give you stuff, right? Not just give you presents, but they give you from their heart. Miss Arlise. No matter what, they're always there for you. Amen. Kaylee, you got another one? No judgment. Amen. Let me say that again. A friend does not judge you, right? A friend doesn't judge you. What else do friends do for you? They make you laugh when you're sad. Sometimes they wet your pants, right? So the woman who just came back from the beach with her friend. Yes, Marie, they make you laugh when you wet your pants. Delene Hinton and I went away for a few days. Mark knows her, and he knows we laughed. What else do friends do for you? Now, what did Jesus say? These are Jesus' words here that, that our friend, Miss Sarah, just read up here. This is my commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. That's Jesus talking. And he says, greater love has, no one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friend. That's a pretty big thing, isn't it, to give up your life for your friend? What do you think that means, to give up your life for your friend? Is 
There are people in this room who give up their lives for you guys, you young people. Your moms and your dads, I know, in a heartbeat would give up their life to save yours. Because I've been with parents in hospitals when their kids are sick and they say to me, I would trade places with them in a heartbeat. And they mean that because they love their children that much. They love you more than they love their own lives. That's who Jesus is for us. He loves us more than he loved his own life, which is why he went to the cross. Sad story, but it's, it's a story filled with love. But he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Hmm. How do you have bossy friends? Well, you can have friends who are a little bossy sometimes, right? But you, they get over it, right? But if your friend says, I want you to do this for me, or do that, do this, do that, what, oh, Jeremiah's like, no, 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 right? I think that's what Jesus means when he says, if, if you love me, if you're my friends, you'll do what I tell you to do. No, he says, if you do what I command you, and he just told us what he commanded us, which was what? This is my commandment that you what? Love each other as I've loved you. Love each other. Did he say, wouldn't it be nice if y'all loved each other? It would be so sweet if y'all loved each other. Just a picture of the world. No, he said, I command you to love each other. It's my commandment. Not, he didn't say, I have a suggestion. Wouldn't it be nice if y'all loved No, he didn't say, it's my suggestion. What did he say? This is my command that you love each other as I've loved you. No one ever will love you as much as Jesus does. Because he loves you from heaven. He loved you when he was on earth. That was God's way of understanding what it is to be human, is to become a human like us, to take on human life and human craziness. Jesus laughed with his friends, I'm sure, with the disciples. I'm sure he knew what it was to be generous because he took some of these lunch and he fed thousands of people with it because he knew the people were hungry. He saw people who were sick, he healed them. Those are the kinds of things that he calls us to do. Those are exactly the kinds of things that Girl Scouts do, aren't they? Girl Scouts are helpful, aren't they? And kind, and loving, and generous, and all those good things. So are the Boy Scouts. I have the Boy Scouts who are present to stand. I don't care if you were a Boy Scout 100 years ago, stand up for your Scout. We've got Boy Scouts here. Look at all those Boy Scouts. Now stand up if you're ever a Girl Scout. Or if you're a Girl Scout now, stand up. Now stand up if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Stand up if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Look at everybody in this room is standing at some point in this game. Because we know how to love, don't we? We know how to love, we know how to care for one another, we know how to change the world. You can all sit down now. Now Jesus goes on to say, you didn't chose me, I chose you, appointed you that, so that you could go and produce fruit and that your fruit could last. It doesn't mean that you grow bananas out of your head. Not what he means, right? But the fruit that we produce, the kind things that we do, the things that we do for others, that's the fruit that we produce. We're called to produce fruit that's good for him. And he says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Now I'm sorry to tell you, that doesn't mean if you want a pony, you say, Jesus, I want a pony, amen. It doesn't happen that way, does it? Jesus, I'd like to win the lottery in your name. I pray, amen. No, it doesn't work that way. Because if it worked that way, we'd all have a lot of money, wouldn't we? So what do you think it means to say, anything he asks the Father in my name, he will give you? It's got to be consistent with his command to love. So if you say, God, I want to have a more loving heart, God's going to give you a more loving heart. It might take a while. Or if you say, God, I need patience. I need it right now. God might make you wait a little bit, but you're going to get the patience you want if you say to God, I'd like to be more wise. God always grants the prayer of wisdom. That comes from the book of James. So if you ask for things that are consistent with the commandment to love, God's going to give you everything you need to get by in this life. And God's going to make us braid with your life and your heart. So I like that at weddings now. I like seeing brides and grooms together braiding some, some ribbons together. And one is God and one is the bride and one is the groom. And that's going to make a strong marriage. But that'll make a strong relationship. It'll make a strong friendship. It'll make anything you want. Now, it's nice that we found some gold fibers up here because we're going to sing about making new friends and keeping the old because that's the Girl Scout song. Before we sing that, we're going to sing about the love that Jesus has for us. I figure everybody knows this song. At some point in your life, you sang, Jesus loves me. 
and even if you're as old as Pastor Terry, or even, you know, there are a few people in this room older than Pastor Terry, believe it or not, like two or three or a couple years older than me. Amen? We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me.